Ehrenberg and I teach here at Victoria College, University of Toronto, Department of Spanish and Portuguese. I hold with another colleague the Brazilian and Portuguese side of the department that is really a Spanish department with a little attachment. Um, I want to thank uh, the University of Toronto, uh, the Department of Spanish and Portuguese, and especially Victoria College and the principal, Angela Easterhammer, who gave us uh, this beautiful room to hold our conference. And so I would like to welcome all of you, not only those here, but I have the sense of a virtual audience out there in Brazil, in Mexico, in Peru, in Machu Picchu, psh, look, looking at this conference. Um, so uh, just this welcome as uh, the second of the four organizers. Uh, and the third organizer, I'd like to call him up here to say a few words, Utsu Moda, who holds a PhD from the Université of Montreal. He's teaching with us here in the Department of Spanish and Portuguese, and we're delighted to have him. And he has been uh, quite a force in organizing uh, this event. Utsu, please. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is a team effort, uh, Brazil, Canada. It was really something to start the first academic conference in, with a film festival, so try to coordinate, this, to have this kind of two point of views uh, from film professionals, industry, and also what we talking about these films, so reflect about the films, so not just watching them, but to continue the discussion. And I think that it's this part of the, uh, it's very interesting that this is part of the festival, and we are very glad that, to have all of you here. And we are very surprised to, received so many proposals from, from all over the world. Four continents, one planet, like we said. And uh, I'd like to introduce the third co uh, or the fourth co uh, organizer, Regina Cunha. She is from um, University of uh, Rio Grande do Norte um, and research in media studies. Uh, she holds a degree in audiovisual from the Institute of Radio and TV in Spain and in cinema from Derby, England. She has awarded the Creative Economy in 2012 from the Brazilian Ministry of Culture for her work in audiovisual education with youth from the periphery of northeastern cities. Uh, currently, she's working on interactive um, work, theory, and transmedia from the, for the Brazilian Digital TV Network. Regina Queen. With great joy and satisfaction, I welcome this group of researchers, teachers, and students of communication, um, of universities of uh, many places around the world. Thank you. I would like to thank the University of Toronto for their uh, hospitality, which is here represented by Professor Ricardo. Thank you, Professor Hutzer, for his great help uh, in organizing this conference. And uh, thank you, Braft, and by Professor Cecilia Queiroz, who embraced uh, this fantastic opportunity to share knowledge about cinema and media with young Brazilian students. Lastly, I thank you for the participation of our researchers, professors, and the students which are attending the conference online. I congratulate the Brazilian researchers and the professors that were able to share their studies and made efforts to be here today. Thank you. It's a very important moment for the Brazilian public university, especially for the Federal University of Rio Grande do Norte, because the discussions that will take place here will directly contribute to our ongoing study results and more important, importantly, to our future research made possible by the work here produced, which will afterwards be made available. The main responsibility of a university is to produce 
and disseminate new information. Information and the knowledge are created through research. The goal of education is to make, to make people wiser, knowledgeable, better informed, ethical, responsible, critical, and capable of continuing to learn. Education, in short, is humanity's best hope and most effective means to achieve sustainable development, which should be today's world's more important goal. Thank you. Let's go to work. I'm moderating our first session, uh, which is called Digital Database and Alternative Media. Um, and I thought I had this all organized here, but give me a moment. Um, so what we'll do, we'll listen to each of the talks, uh, and then we'll have the question and answer period. Uh, and I'll ask them to come back, um, and, and we'll then line them up so you can fire questions at them. I believe that uh, the people watching in other countries will be able to ask questions as well. So we'll have a period of question and answer after the four uh, participants. And our first one is José Cláudio Siqueira Castanheira uh, from Brazil. He's an assistant professor at the Arts Department and vice coordinator of the cinema course at the Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina. He's developing research into the constitution of different models of listening. We'll do a lot of that today. And their relation to technologies and social practices. He's one of the contributors to the anthology Reverberations, the Philosophy, Aesthetics, and Politics of Noise, 2012, edited by Michel Godard, Benjamin Halligan, and Paul Hegarty. He's also a member of the organizing committee of the fourth small cinema conference, Crossing Borders, held at the Universidade Federal de Santa Catarina. José Claudio. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you all of the organizing committee of the conference. And second of all, I'd like to apologize for my English. So if I use some word mistakenly, do you please forgive me? Um, let me open. Well, well first of all, uh, I was interested by the conference because of when, when I read it, uh, social engagement uh, or engagement by social media. And I was, I, I think that, that everybody here, at least the Brazilian ones, knows uh, what is happening in Brazil just now, the social movements, people in the streets asking for the government or complaining about the government. And um, that was my start point to, to talk about um, the multiplication of images in the on, on digital media on the internet and the paper it the, the role it it has nowadays and so i this is not a political work it's not a political paper um, i'm studying technologies but i couldn't avoid talking about political issues uh, when there's so many important things going on. I'd like to, sh to start showing you just one minute of a uh, video I, I, uh, I watched on U YouTube about the popular um, manifestations uh, in Rio de Janeiro um, in, uh, on the September 7th, the, the day of our independence. So just uh, One minute.
So, uh, it has no audio, audio. sounds. Um, never mind. So, no problem. Well, uh, as you can see, the, um, many of the, this is a, a collection of images made within uh, the, the movement, the manifestations, and uh, they were edited and put online, uploaded. So I think that's enough. And so uh, it was not just one uh, filmmaker. There were several uh, of the, the participants of the movements. They were filming it, and they had a kind of um, multiple narrative upon the, the ab about what happened, what really happened. And at the beginning of the video, on, on the, the description of the video in YouTube, they say uh, that's. Uh, what really happened that day. So I was asking myself, um, how can you say, how could you say that uh, that was what really happened that day? And we, I, I'm starting from the, some, some assumptions that we usually have that if you have uh, as many points of view as possible, that's, that would get you nearer the truth. So uh, starting from that, I, point, I posit some questions. Uh, what kind of narrative is constructed from this multiplication of images, from these several, Im several different images, several points, uh, different points of view that are mixed together and they intend to present you of what really happened that day? Um, ah, really, uh, is it real that mul multiple uh, images, stories, or viewpoints, they are more faithful to facts? Um, what are, and the, the, the next question, what would be the abilities needed to read those uh, images once they are not uh, um, a traditional narrative, once they are not even intended to be a, 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 a traditional narrative of the events. Um, so, my conceptual framework, I would deal with some concepts that I found interesting to, to uh, make the analysis of this kind of uh, instruction. Uh, first of all, I'd like to, to work with uh, some ideas from Fernanda Bruno, she's a researcher from Rio, uh, when she talks about digital traces. And then I would like to use just a little bit of Latour's Actors Network Theory. And there's a, a recent book from Catherine Hales when she makes some analysis of narratives and database that I found also interesting for this uh, paper. And I'd like to use some ideas of Manovich, Lev Manovich, about software as a meta medium. And so, talking about digital traces, when what interests me uh, uh, here is 
uh, how any action uh, on the internet uh, it is always it le always leaves traces. Uh, it's um, impossible, almost impossible, for you to erase some action on the internet. So everything, but just now I'm I'm going to the internet. Although sometimes I'd like to erase myself from videos and photos, but at this, this very moment I'm I'm being transmitted and I'm being inscribed on uh, the internet. So this qua this qua <laughs> it's quasi with an I, it's wrong here. Uh, this almost object, this quasi object is uh, it, it transits in the limits of presence and absence in the of the visible and the invisible. And uh, also, also what interests me is that uh, not all of these traces are produced by human actions. Some of them, and I would think that today uh, most of them are produced by uh, mechanical actions, by software actions. Uh, you don't need anymore to, to, for you to do an action, to, to create, an, to upload a photo, to upload a video, but softwares, but machines themselves, the, the, they, they interact and they produce digital traces. And these digital traces would be uh, the, a kind of uh, a, a, a whole world where the, the machines, the softwares, the search programs, they would go and they would find and catch uh, as many information as they, as they need to construct databases. And uh, according uh, to Catherine Hales and to Lev Manovich, the database would be perhaps today the um, mainframe of our intellectual concepts, the constructions, or the, the way we produce knowledge nowadays, or the new tools, the new digital tools to produce, produce knowledge, they would necessarily involve the use of database. That uh, a critique that Hales does is that the humanities are not still uh, using database at their power, the whole power, but you can see that on the other fields of knowledge like hard sciences, uh, the use of database as a mode of construction of knowledge. And what are the, the, the some of the, the results of this construction of knowledge according to Hales, and I'm tending to, to agree with her, is that when dealing with database, with this specific form of constructing knowledge, of organizing knowledge, you can adapt, you, you may, you must adapt yourself, your way of producing knowledge for you to, to, to deal with it. Uh, the cognition models are different, the way you, you analyze, the way you, you can't use more what she calls the close reading. You do, it's not a text, a traditional text that you read with attention and you find it a, a close narrative that you can find a beginning, a middle and an end. When you deal with database, it's such an, a, a big amount of information that you can't, uh, it's uh, psychologically and physiologically impossible for you to, uh, uh, <coughs> uh, uh, to deal with such a big amount of information. So, uh, that's when the that's the place where the, the software, where the, the, the computers and the the networks they enter, for for they have a much more powerful capacity of dealing with such an amount of information, and so we have to create new ways of of dealing with that. So uh, what I use from Latour here is the the way that suggest, he suggests that. Uh, when talking about social, the, the sociological approach, we can't uh, consider machines as non-participants in social facts. Uh, we have to, to, to deal with the interaction, and he would call the actants, uh, the interaction between human and non-human elements, or actants, constructing social factors. And the question he poses, uh, when we act, who else is acting? 
how many agents are also present. So it's necessary to think technical apparatuses as a key part uh, in building these networks. Uh, and sometimes uh, we are um, uh, we tend not to consider these technical apparatus. We, we tend uh, to think they are invisible. For um, the, I think the, the only occasions when we, we we can see them working is when they are not working. When the, just now, as the computer didn't work, as we had a technical problem, we saw oh, it's a computer. So there is a computer mediating my action here. Otherwise, if, if it worked all right, you would never think, oh, that's a computer working. And so we, uh, one of, the, uh, of the, 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 the occasions when we feel there is a mediation, a technological mediation, is when the technology doesn't work. That's one of, in Latour's classifications, that's one of the, the, the moments we, we think about technology as taking part in the process. But according to... to, to uh, to Menovich considerations, uh, we should always think of technology mediating process. And uh, it would be almost impossible for you to think of technology and mainly nowadays uh, think of databases as not participating um, fully of our day life. And so some of the things he says is that, that databases would form some kind of paradigms or, uh, that is a whole uh, group of a whole set of information upon which we would work we would select something to, to construct <coughs> our um, our knowledge and so uh, upon this paradigmatic uh, that is this this whole set upon, uh, upon which we select some things we can construct narratives and these narratives for for Menovich, they would be um, they, they would be like natural enemies database and narratives would be like natural enemies once uh, narratives are identified like to, to cinema or to literature that would be in his opinion would be uh, a node form of expression and then he's very uh, uh, he has some ideas that are very let's say had radicals and and that the 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 real way for you to, to approach reality today would be through databases, through a whole set of information that it, 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 it's, it's needed a mechanical process for you to let's see the time goes so fast. Okay. And so all this set, the, 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 these questions, the, all this, this framework is to consider how these images uh, that are said to be the, the narratives of real events or the real narratives of events, how can they be close to truth, to, to reality? Could they? That, that's a question. I don't know uh, the answer for that. But what I could say is that the more uh, viewpoints, the more, uh, the, the, the biggest the number of viewpoints of images you construct, I think the more complex these narratives come to be. So um, <clears throat> you can say that what we think about uh, traditional narratives, that they, they must uh, deal with um, a chronological organization of time, with, of events, with some uh, um, relations about, uh, let's see, with some relations about the characters and things like that, they are all mixed up in today's net, uh, form of construction of databases. So you don't have really who is, the, uh, is inside, who is telling what is, with what, and what is being told. You don't have the, the you're not sure about that. And uh, <coughs> uh, let me see. okay. Uh, so, I, I brought an example. I don't know if you know this example, the faces of Facebook. 
it's uh, um, <coughs> it's there, there was a programmer and she she made uh, all in that it's a uh, software that it catches all the the profiles of Facebook and puts all of them all one billion and two hundred and it's always growing in just one screen so you, everyone here who has a Facebook is there one of those dots and so this is an example uh, why uh, of, of how databases deal with information it's not necessary for you to construct a, a narrative or that, uh, or that is it's some kind of uh, showing pleasure it's, it's almost like a, I would say a kind of attraction in the sense of the cinema of attractions is the, the the pleasure of showing something and not necessarily um, constructing a narrative so th that's just one example um, and she says that she makes that for fun and so I would identify the 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 idea of databases of a kind of not fun but a kind of pleasure of showing information and some kind of impossible uh, form of show information because you can't cope with the, all that information. So you delegate, you give the, 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 that function to programs, to softwares. And uh, concluding, I think it's, it's a lot of things to say, but we, we can't always say what all we want, but uh, some conclusions is that <coughs> the relationship between information and reality seems to be diluted to the extent that uh, the coherence and organization of the databases, uh, they work more in in, in the, uh, endogenously than to refer to external factors. That is, uh, <coughs> all the information uh, thing, uh, in, in the database seems to dialogue with in an internal uh, uh, dialogue, and it's not Necess not necessarily relating to something from outside, from a, a narrative construction from outside. That's, uh, that, that still happens. Uh, we, we tend to, to, to construct these narratives, but it seems that the, the, the way of working, the, the, <coughs> the logic of the database is not that way. And the formulation of truths about uh, this or that part pattern of the database um, the disconstruction of narratives is not of no interest of the machine. It's, of, it's something that you, we, human actors, <coughs> we need, but the machine doesn't need it. And so, that the real is a, a, a kind of construction that is uh, somewhat related to the technological uh, uh, environment you, you, you're working, working with, so we must relativize what we think it, it, it is really the real or the truth. And let, let me finish. Um, that the understanding the number of dispersed images on the internet as a paradigmatic set upon which search engines do not produce a subjective interpretation is to multiply the possibilities of narrative concatenations of the same images. That is, uh, the most complex the database, the most complex the narratives we tend to build upon them. And the most complex these narratives are the most, in my opinion, the most far for, from the truth or from the real we get. So I would, I would think that this kind of construction of images on the um, internet using databases, always growing databases, it would not present us with truth, truth or with real events. It would present us with a kind of truth, of internal truth of the images, but not a, a universal truth. So uh, that is it's some, somewhat uh, a complex question, uh, but we can talk about it later. Thank you.